an underground city of giants, has been discovered in the Grand Canyon. If only the world's buried cities would rise up someday, but they don't. They're almost impossible to find. Those stories about rediscovered cities, once inhabited by a race of giants, will always fascinate us. Amazing discoveries require great efforts or an even greater amount of luck. According to an article published in the Arizona Gazette in April 5, 1909, the Grand Canyon was once home to civilization that most likely consisted of individuals of cyclopean proportions. They were huge giants. If such a civilization ever lived, surely would have left behind some structure as a testament of its existence. We've already found the red-haired giants in Wisconsin and the huge giant skeletons in Nevada. And the American Native Indians have legends of giants all over the United States. The article mentions the discovery of an enormous underground citadel by an explorer named G.E. Kincaid, who stumbled upon it while rafting on the Colorado River. It's worth mentioning that Kincaid was an established archaeologist and had financial backing from the Smithsonian Institute. The entrance to the city was at the end of a tunnel that stretched for almost a mile underground. Kincaid wrote, First, I would impress that the cavern is nearly inaccessible. The entrance is 1,484 feet down the sheer canyon wall. It's located on government land and no visitor will be allowed there under penalty of trespass. Above the shelf which hid it from view from the river was the mouth of the cave. When I saw the chisel marks on the wall inside the entrance, I became interested, securing my gun and went in. The architecture suggested the builders of the underground city possessed advanced engineering skills. The central hub of the subterranean city was a mammoth chamber out of which passageways radiated like spokes on a wheel. The walls of the main chamber were adorned with copper weapons and tablets covered in hieroglyphic symbols not dissimilar to those found in Egypt, so they looked like Egyptian hieroglyphs. Another finding that pointed to an Egyptian link were the mummified bodies, by far the most intriguing thing inside the citadel. No mummy measured less than nine feet tall and all of them were wrapped in dark linen. Kincaid wrote he had stood one up and photographed it by flashlight, but that photo is nowhere to be found. Further exploration revealed something about the religion of the city's giant inhabitants. Kincaid states, over a hundred feet from the entrance is the cross wall, several hundred feet long in which are found the idol, or image of the people's god sitting cross-legged with a lotus flower or lily in each hand. The cast of the face is oriental and so is the carving of the cavern. The idol almost resembles Buddha, though the scientists are not certain as to what religious, religious worship it represents. The article records the discovery of pottery and instruments, all bearing the signs of having originated elsewhere in the world. Such a melange of cultures is nearly uh, rarely encountered in archaeological finds, making this discovery one of unprecedented importance. The last chamber that awaited exploration was what Kincaid and his partner, Professor S.A. Jordan, believed to be a ceremonial crypt. It was located at the end of the large room where all the other mummies have been found. He said, there's one chamber of the passageway which is not ventilated and when we approached it a deadly snaky smell struck us. Our light would not penetrate the gloom and until stronger ones are available we will not know what the chamber contains. Some say snakes but others think it may contain a deadly gas or chemicals used by the ancients. The whole underground installation gives one of shaking nerves the creeps. Unfortunately, the article stops before giving more details about this crucial discovery. In fact, no other official mention of this underground city is ever made. 
Was it all a hoax or is there something more sinister responsible for the silence? There are some who believe the story of the subterranean city of giants is true and that a tight lid has been carefully placed on top of the affair. Conspiracy theorist John Rhodes once said he knew the exact location of the entrance to the city but that it was guarded 24-7 by soldiers carrying M16 rifles. Another idea floating around the internet said that the underground city in the Grand Canyon now serves as a museum for the shadowy ruling class. Last but not least, and mostly because of David Icke, many have connected the deadly snaky smell with the presence of reptilian humanoids, Nephilim, Anunnaki, the uh, demon entities. Needless to say, the Smithsonian Institute denied knowledge of the existence of such an enigmatic subterranean city in the Grand Canyon, but their disclosure fails to convince everyone. The abundance of conspiracy theories built around the idea that the Smithsonian activity hides or destroys evidence in order to maintain the standard historical viewpoint does little to help the issue. Due to an ac acute absence of evidence, it seems that for the moment, the story of the underground city of giants is just that, a story. Well, we've had other evidences and photographs of giants of the United States that were taken away. The skeletons were removed and never to be seen again. They were removed supposedly for um, DNA examination and uh, research and they were never returned to any museum or the uh, original discoverers of the huge ancient skeletons of the United States. I'll leave a link below for you for this.